Hey everybody, Jeff Archman here, and here we go with my review series for the new Magical Girl based show, Miraculous Ladybug. So, I figured it'd probably be best if I mentioned my experience with Magical Girl shows growing up, given the context of the show, and why a white adult male is reviewing a show meant for little girls, just before the internet decides to lynch me. Growing up, I watched Cardcaptor Sakura, Sailor Moon, Witch, and a smattering of Tokyo Mew Mew here and there. Note I said growing up, hence why I didn't include Madoka Magica, Little Witch Academia, Fate Collide, Kill the Kill, or Star vs. The Force of Evil in that list, or any Magical Girl based show which I have not included here, right here and now. At the time, I didn't have the faintest clue that they were meant for female audiences until I was in secondary school, or high school for you lot overseas. I'm trying to translate the years is a bit confusing. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get ourselves some um, properly attired for this review, shall we? What? Did you think I was going to transform into a latex slash leather wearing superhero persona? Please. Everyone knows you get more views if you're cute and cuddly. Please note that I'm going to be basing my review order on the French release of the episodes, even though the episodes are in English. Ladybug has got at least three different release schedules. Korean, French, and American. Although I'm almost certain that Britain has a different release schedule as well. So to keep things simple, I'm going to go with the French order, since the show is based in Paris and is made by a French company. So without further ado and delay, let's dive right on into Miraculous Ladybug Episode 1, Stormy Weather. The show introduces us to the characters of Marinette, Manon, Kiki and Alia, and the recurring crush theme that Marinette has on Adrian as ruthlessly portrayed by her friend Alia. It also introduces, though through some slight exposition courtesy of Manon, that Marinette is aiming to become a fashion designer. This serves well for a first episode, as even though the characters are already established within their own timeline of events, it gives the audience an immediate idea of who each of the primary characters are and what they're like. Soon enough, we get to our villain of the episode, Stormy Weather, who makes for a very energetic first character, and it shows off just how easy it is for this true central antagonist Hawkmoth to turn a person to his whim through a simple TV show election result. I still prefer the name Monarch that I had floating around in my head when this guy was first revealed with the original anime promo teaser. It kept to the butterfly theme he had, as well as denoting his status as the big bad of the series. Anyway, getting back on track, it seems that Stormy's got a bit of a fixation on blowing up anything and everything that has her competitor's face on it. Whether this is due to the nature of how she got turned into Stormy Weather, or simply her own temperament, remains to be seen for the rest of the series. If it is a recurring theme for all the villains to fixate on the reason they became acclimatized, then it's a nice bit of consistency that lends credence to their transformations. Of course, the main talking point of the episode is how well Ladybug and Chat Noir work together, and how Chat defers to Ladybug's judgement during the fight, although he's not altogether afraid to take charge if he has an advantage, which he doesn't, such as when they were plunged into darkness, you know, being able to see in the dark. It's a nice touch to the show even though its primary demographic is a young female audience. The staff writers could very easily have fixated on Ladybug and relegated Chat to the same sort of role that Tuxedo Mask had in Sailor Moon, which was show up, spout some lines, and then disappear without ever actually doing anything useful beyond inspirational words. Hey, what's happening? Who dares? You must believe in yourself, Sailor Moon. seems much more reminiscent of the dynamic between Sakura and Lee in Card Captors, which I always enjoyed more than the former example. Even if Chat is taking any shot he can to flirt with Ladybug. Their moves and styles seem to complement one another rather well, as well as their weapon sets, the yo-yo and the bow staff. Of course their powers are polar opposites, yet complementary to one another as well, with Ladybug being able to create something that will be useful to the fight if she can figure out exactly how she's meant to use it, whilst Chat Noir can destroy whatever he touches. 
This is to symbolize how their respective animals are viewed in French folklore, with the ladybug being a symbol of good luck, whilst the black cat being one of bad luck, in most common cases. In the south of France, for example, they're seen as good luck if you feed them well enough and look after them properly. So, after some teamwork, they bring down the villain and de-evilize her via breaking the thing that the Akuma got into, in this case her umbrella, slash parasol, and then purifying the butterfly with Ladybug's yo-yo, with the item that Ladybug made earlier being used to fix all the damage that had been caused as a result, and with the Akuma victim apparently having no memory of their time as a villain. Which has got to be a little embarrassing for them when it comes to anyone finding out that they had been the villain. But as far as first episodes go, this one managed to hit the right notes in my opinion. It introduced us to the characters, their dynamic, the main villain of the show and their immediate goal, and the powers and their limits of our two heroes. It didn't drag on anywhere, and you could get a real sense of tension as they raced against the clock, literally and figuratively, to stop the akumatized villain, whilst also still bouncing it out with some light-hearted comedic moments. This is a children's show after all, don't want to push them away right off the bat with any dark elements that parents would most assuredly not approve of. It gives me some nostalgia for the magical girl shows of the past that I grew up with, and feels like a nice blending of, the, of them all whilst also still being its own entity. I look forward to taking a look at the rest of the series, and hope that the rest of the season, as well as the already proposed seasons 2-3, to three, manage to live up to the hype that the fandom has given them. I mean, seriously, even before this show even came out, there was fan art and fan comics and fan merchandise and everything going on with it, even just from the animated PV alone, long before the show itself actually was officially released. That is some serious hype. So let's hope that the rest of the season and the already proposed seasons 2 to 3 can manage to live up to that. Jaffa Archfiend, bogging out.